Welcome to Implausible Nature, your home for competitive Black Templar play. On today's video, I thought we'd do something a little different and dive into talking about the lore a little bit. And what better way to start that off than talking about uh, heraldry? I've seen a lot of uh, questions on uh, various platforms asking about, well, what color do I paint my shoulder pads for this unit or that unit? And there's uh, a lot of uh, confusion going around about um, what units should be painted in what fashion to match our lore accurately. GW has kind of changed that a little bit uh, over the years, and uh, some of it doesn't make sense. Um, so what we'll do is uh, I'll uh, dive into talking about sort of the history of our heraldry, and then I will give my thoughts on uh, how I do it and I, how I think the most lore accurate way of doing it uh, will be. So uh, let us start off with the way back when to the fourth edition codex. This was when we be, became a full official army book. We had uh, our own unique units in it and they have a page in the back where it talks about our heraldry uh, under the how to paint black templar section so you can see here there's uh, a bunch of different schemes um, obviously your neophytes and your initiates those are the the most common way that we see black templars with that black cross over a white field with black trim and that will cover the vast majority of your army here so all of your crusader squad initiates um, your uh, devastators and things like that of course back then we didn't have devastators but all of your rank and file black templars would be painted this way then we have the red shoulder pad with the black cross uh, and here it's labeled assault squad but gw did something a little confusing with this they labeled it assault squad in here but they actually showed images of biker squads that were painted with that same scheme which kind of led a lot of players to believe okay well maybe this is just the fast attack uh, slot and then obviously our sword brethren have the red cross on the black field with a red trim on their shoulder pad and sword brethren uh, in this book are essentially anyone who is a veteran type unit so terminators of course um, we had an actual sword brethren unit back then and they would be painted this way and then we see here uh, the chaplain painted black with a black trim and a white cross on it to differentiate them uh, from their, their brethren. And then of course the apothecary has red trim as well to denote his uh, special uh, status as a medic. So fast forward to now and the 8th edition codex. There are now only three options being shown and GW has sort of moved away from the idea of these are troops, these are fast attack, these are heavy support. Now of course those uh, battlefield roles still exist uh, for the game terms but they were also present in the fluff uh, for a uh, long time and Troops were had one designation and fast attack had another designation. They have moved away from that, and now they have battle line, fire support, close support, and then of course veterans in command. So in the new book, they have denoted that our traditional black on white with black trim is command, battle line, and fire support, and that makes you know pretty pretty good sense that's the vast majority of our troops are going to be like that. Then they have this new role called close support and close support is a very strange thing that they did here. There's a lot of units in close support that don't really make sense to me. Like for example, in cursors are close support. Well, I mean, yes, they can get in close because of their ability to infiltrate and they are good in close combat, relatively speaking, for a troop. But infiltrators are battle line. Well, they're both troops. So that's that's kind of what I'm talking about. It doesn't really seem to make sense to me as far as why some of these units are close support and some of them aren't. You know, assault centurions are another uh, close support uh, unit. So are uh, land speeders. 
Um, but land speeders can carry some very long range firepower. Obviously, they can carry some short range firepower as well. But it, it's uh, it's an interesting category that they've just sort of randomly lumped some of these units into. And then, of course, you see fire support. Um, these all pretty much make sense. They're all units with guns uh, that shoot from long range or have heavy weaponry. And then veterans are, of course, uh, veterans. Your Stern Guard, your Vanguard, uh, Terminators, of course, and that sort of thing. So uh, what do I think about all this? I think that the battle line close support, fire support uh, sort of thing is strange and Some of those things, like I said, don't make sense to me, especially for Black Templars. And as Black Templars, you know, that's what the Codex Astartes categorizes these as. We don't follow the Codex Astartes, like, at all. Uh, Black Templars pretty much threw that book out, and we do not follow any of the dictates in it uh, or any of the guidelines in it. Uh, as far as how to organize and run a chapter of Space Marines. So to me, it makes sense that we would also disregard what the roles are listed as in here. And uh, so this is kind of how I feel. This is how I run my uh, Black Templars as far as my paint scheme goes. But I also think that it's also a really lore-accurate way of doing it. So for our initiates, um, which are going to be, again, that Black traditional black cross on a white field with black trim. This will be all of our troops' choices um, and all of the non-fast attack type of units, so like devastators and aggressors and centurions and things like that. You could make a case that assault centurions could be sword brethren because of their very close uh, combat-oriented nature. But I think they can just be just as easily be initiates as well. And then the red trim with the black cross and white field. I kind of go back to the old codex, except instead of it just being applying to assault squads, I feel like it being uh, applied to any unit that is sort of in a fast attack slot, a unit that is very fast ways of getting close to the enemy or de- redeploying quickly or the ability to deep strike those sort of things. So I've put things like Reavers in here because of their ability to deep strike and their their grappling hooks and things like that. Um, Assault squads, of course. Um, I also put Suppressors in here because they do have jump packs, uh, even though they are much more of a, almost like a Devastator type squad, uh, because they can move so fast across the battlefield, I think that they fit well in this category. And then, of course, our Sword Brethren, and this is literally anyone who is a veteran. So Stern Guard, Vanguard, Company Veterans, Terminators. These are all going to be your sword brethren with that red on black scheme. And then lastly, uh, the command. So I like the idea that the command also follows what the chaplains do from the old book, that white cross on a black field. It's really really sharp looking to me and makes your unit pop out a little bit more. Um, But of course, you know, your command units, your marshals and your castellans are going to do whatever they want because they're so high ranking that they're going to have their own personal heraldry. So you can really do whatever you want with them and it would be fluff accurate. So there we have it. That is uh, sort of a bit of a history on the heraldry of the Black Templars and uh, the way that I do it and the way that I think is the most lore accurate way to paint it. So let me know what you think of this. How do you guys paint your Black Templars and your different units? Uh, Let me know down in the comments uh, below. Uh, Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.